let's talk about packaging of dna helix the very first question is that why packaging is needed we know very well that dna is a long molecule roughly 3 meter long and it has to pack in a very very small nucleus which is just few micrometer in diameter hence a higher order of packaging is required there are various level of packaging for our convenience we can say that the first order of the packaging is the nucleosome the second order of the packaging is the solenoid fiber the solenoid fiber later on form scaffold loop scaffold loop form chromatids and chromatids finally forms the chromosome one by one we will discuss in details about all this but first of all have a look at the diagram of the different level of packaging let's start with the very first that is a dna molecule so dna molecule is just 20 angstrom so dna molecule is packed into a nucleosome which is 110 angstrom wide the nucleosome is packed into a solenoid fiber which is 300 angstrom wide solenoid fiber forms the scaffold loop which is roughly 3000 angstrom wide scaffold loop packed into a chromatids which is 7000 angstrom wide and finally the chromatids forms the chromosome so this is how a very small molecule of dna is packed within a chromosome let's learn the very first order of compaction that is the nucleosome so this is the structure of the nucleosome the concept of the nucleosome was proposed by Roger Cordenberg and the term nucleosome was coined by P. Audet. Nucleosome is a fundamental repeating unit of all eukaryotic chromosomes except those of sperms. In case of sperms, since the histone proteins are not there, so that's why the typical nucleosome structure is not present in case of sperms. The nucleosome consists of 200 base pairs of DNA which is wrapped around an octomer and octamer consists of two copies of histone proteins that is H2A, H2B, H3 and H4. The two nucleosomes are joined together by a linker DNA. So in the diagram it is absolutely clear that uh, this red color structure is uh, the 200 base pairs of DNA and this the linker DNA and uh, this is the H1 histone. If you talk in detail about the nucleosome, uh, the very first step is the formation of a dimer. This dimer is going to be formed by H2A and H2B histone proteins. Later, two molecules of H3 and H4 together form tetramer. Then two dimer and one tetramer together form one octamer. This octamer along with a uh, 200 base pair of DNA forms one nucleosome. So this 200 base pair of DNA is wrapped around an octamer. So we can say that octamer along with 200 base pair of DNA constitute one nucleosome as it is pretty clear from in the diagram as well that these centrally placed octamer is uh, covered by a DNA molecule which is shown by a red color and this histone H1 histone is shown by the green color and these two uh, these nucleosomes in continuation, they are connected with another nucleosomes by a linker DNA, which we can see in the next slide. So, nucleosome is a spheroid body with a diameter of 110 angstrom and a width of 50 to 50 angstroms. As far as the number of turn of DNA per nucleosome is concerned, it is 1.75, that is less than 2. So out of 200 base pair of DNA, 146 base pair of are tightly bounded to octamer and those DNA which is tightly bounded to octamer is actually called as a core DNA. The DNA that is present in between the two nucleosome is called a linker DNA and that can vary in length from 8 to 114 base pair. This linker DNA is species specific. It means that every species has a different number of base pairs within the linker DNA. So we can conclude that uh, core particle consists of 146 base pair of DNA which is wrapped around an octamer of histones. This core particle later on forms chromatosome which consists of core particle plus one molecule of histones and along with it it is associated 166 base pair of DNA. 
this chromatosomes eventually forms nucleosome in case of nucleosome what happens that chromatosome links with a linker dna to form nucleosome and each nucleosome as usual contains 200 base pairs of dna so let's talk about the proteins that is present in a chromosome so broadly there are two types of protein one is a histone second is a non histone histone is a basic protein and non histone is a acidic protein so histone uh suppresses the gene actions whereas the non histone promotes the gene actions let's learn something more about the histone proteins so altogether there are five types of histone proteins that is h1 h2a h2b h3 and h4 out of these five histones the three that is h1 h2a and hb are rich in lysine lysine is an amino acid whereas h3 and h4 are rich in arginine out of these five histones h1 is highly unconserved and mutable it means that h1 is very very specific in every species on contrary h3 and h4 are highly conserved molecules it means that over the period of time or through the evolutionary chain these two histones has undergone a least changes so that's why we call them highly conserved molecule as far as their molecular weight is concerned h1 is the heaviest whereas h4 is of least molecular weight very interestingly tryptophan is absent altogether in all histones the molecular weight of histone is approximately 25000 dalton the non histone proteins are acidic in nature and their molecular weight are in between 1 to 1.5 lakh dalton these are mostly enzymes and since these are enzymatic in nature they promote gene actions let's talk about the second level of packaging so in the second level of packaging what happens that nucleosome together going to form a solenoid the concept was proposed by finch and clark so here what happens that six nucleosome together forms a solenoid so earlier we have seen that uh, the diameter of the nucleosome was 10 nanometer so six 10 nanometer structures together forms 30 nanometer fiber so this solenoid fiber is also referred to as a 30 nanometer fiber and in this h1 histone stabilizes the structure you can see the diagram that all together there are uh, six nucleosome this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 and all these six histones are stabilized by the histone protein that is a h1 histone so the diameter of this entire structure is 30 nanometer so that's why it is often referred to as a 30 nanometer fiber and it is also known as a solenoid you can see the structure of the solenoid in this this is how the solenoid looks like and as i told you that popularly it is also known as a 30 nanometer fiber so let's talk about the further packaging the further packaging occurs in the form of a formation of a super solenoid or scaffold fiber so it results into the formation of 700 nanometer structure which is well observed in case of metaphase further condensation occurs in the form of formation of a chromatin fiber and uh, that is also visible in case of chromosome and finally the chromatin condense in the form of a, a chromosome well this is a question for you Uh, we know very well that uh, dna is an enzyme which degrades dna so if a nucleosome is going to be treated with the dnas then uh, some of the dna is going to be degraded but there are some base pairs which remains intact so you have to find out that what is the total number of base pair that remain intact even after the treatment of the dna so there is a hint that enzyme cannot degrade the tightly bounded dna so we are expecting the answer to this email id that is info@theratofaptacats.com and uh, you send the answer you will get a free video lessons